Okay, so we are now at the stage where we're actually ready to use some of the components of the Nanopore 16S kit. Um, we have the primers here, and if you recall, uh, in, in this particular demo, we prepared our microbiome samples, um, and, and those were um, you know, just the end stage is getting to some DNA that we can actually amplify. And I've already transferred those into a set of strip tubes um, that are on this, this ice tray. And then from the nanopore kit, what I have is this array of um, primers. Uh, so it, they give you a 96 foil plate and every three, as you'll see in a second with the guide, are actually barcoded primers. Um, I believe every, uh, every package for the current configuration allows you to do uh, six reactions. So you have enough to do several plates. Um, and when you take a guide, uh, if you want to know which barcodes you're using, you can go ahead and line the guide with the notch up and look and see. In this particular uh, one, we've already used barcodes one through seven. So I have another two sets of barcodes. Uh, I could continue using, you know, number eight and then keep it sequential. I'm going to be lazy and go um, this way because this whole section is just a test uh, for this demo. So I'll be lazy today. I also have my trusty Nanopore checklist. Uh, so it's good to use the protocol and they actually make really good protocols. Of course, we're gonna mention some modifications and they'll be documented. Um, the very first modification that we're making is, is that uh, when we prepare our sample, Nanopore gives you a very specific concentration of DNA and you can use a qubit as, as we do have one here, um, but many people may not have access to that or some other way to really reliably um, tell the concentration of their DNA. What I typically find um, from this experiment is that your concentration is lower than you would think. Um, shoes are probably, I think, pretty rich uh, in microbes, but sometimes people will go and swab a surface and it's really not very much there at all. I mean, unless you're sticking it into a plate of bacteria, you probably don't have all that much DNA. Um, so oftentimes I've erred in the side of caution and our recommendations are for things that will are, are more likely to give you some kind of result. And you can decide if that's the outcome that you're looking for. In the educational use case, uh, we often want the students to get something they can look at, some data at the end. Um, if the student is doing a research project more than a research, let's say, experience where they're just learning uh, procedures, uh, then you may decide to be a bit more careful with some things than we're doing here, relaxing some of those constraints. So the very first thing that the Nanopore protocol says is that, that you're going to take a, a strip, uh, strip tubes and you need 15 microliters of something that's at about 10 uh, nanograms total. I've already laid things out. I have a control tube that is just water, so I can actually take everything that's in this tube and put in this tube. I'm also taking advantage of the fact that I don't, I'm not processing that many samples. I'm gonna test a different um, PCR uh, uh, polymerase and setup. I'll let you know how that works. Uh, but I have another set that's here. It's gonna be quite different, or it's, it's slightly different. So uh, I'm replicating things in a way that you normally wouldn't have to do. Um, before I do the transfer, um, of the DNA into here. Um, well, I'll note that what it often uh, mentions to do is to do things sort of in the order that they say. Here, it doesn't matter. Um, just to avoid uh, contamination before I open up tubes of DNA, if in my one uh, stock tube of this 2X Master Mix, uh, this NEB long amp, I'm gonna aliquot that first. By the way, uh, I'll mention that this is one of the, the NEB PCR, um, uh, the, the, the component, the long amp tack, is one of the things that does not come with the kit. So please check the kit. They're very good at telling you what third party reagents you need to buy ahead. And this is one of the few ones, if, if not the only one almost, except for water and ethanol um, that you need with this kit. So we need 25 microliters of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and aliquot that into these tubes, and then I'm gonna do the DNA transfer.
So I'm doing a control. Control is not 100% necessary. Um, I like to do it <clears throat> sometimes, make sure things, if you were, um, if you didn't want to use up a barcode, like the way I'm doing, I'm actually wasting a barcode um, by having a control here. There's often enough um, of the primer mix left over that you could probably get a control. And the goal for the control is just to make sure it comes out blank because we're not adding DNA to it. So um, by all means, I am uh, using a barcode that I don't have to. You can save that one and or skip the control entirely. Uh, again, being super lazy or super efficient, whichever one you want to accuse me of, uh, by using my multi-channel here. So we need to do 15. Or I'm doing 15 microliters. It says you want 15 microliters of your DNA. So I'll do that. Just as long as I get the right volume. Oh, and I forgot. Don't need that extra tip. As you're doing the pipetting, you know, really make sure that you can see what you're doing so that you, you know, there's a small volume. So you want to make sure you actually see that you have the right amount. Okay. All right. So the last thing to do, this is a pretty quick uh, step, is to go ahead and get your primers. And again, these are the primers for the 16S gene, but every single tube here is um, barcoded. So um, the resulting PCR product is going to be unique uh, to that particular sample so that we can decode it uh, later. And uh, so I've gotten the DNA in there. I've gotten the 2X uh, tag, and it's going to be 10 microliters. And you need to just keep track of which barcodes you're using. And you can go ahead and directly puncture. Let's do this correctly. Okay. And then I press, I go and I press down and then I draw it up. I'm visually confirming I have that. I've got to make sure I keep my orientation correct. So I know which barcodes are going in. And then it mentions uh, pipetting up and down a couple times to mentions it 10 times and mix everything thoroughly. So by all means. And as I said, I'm, you don't have to do this. I'm doing a replicate kind of, uh, testing a different uh, PCR mix. So. Okay, visually confirming that I have that. Okay, now I am going to cap that up and get off the ice just to really seal this. Happen to be fancy today and have one of my little spinners. Um, by the way, I didn't mention the primers. 
Uh, for the primers, if you notice that the liquid is on the side, it tends not to, but if that happens, you can always uh, use a plate spinner. Uh, or really, if you don't have a plate spinner, because we're trying to avoid unnecessary tools, a couple quick taps is usually enough to get it uh, all to the bottom, but I didn't have any problem today, so all looks good. So we end up with about 50 microliters here. I'm visually, you know, checking and looking, making sure that everything uh, looks to be the correct volume. All right, and then you'll follow directions uh, for PCR. Now, uh, this will be documented, but I have some additional recommendations here. Um, so the nanopore recommendations have you um, do the PCR for 25 cycles, which I've, I've done this and I've experienced that some students didn't get anything um, from their shoe. And again, that may be because it's a very sparse thing. That's reality, right? Um, and in this case, we're not necessarily being quantitative. Um, there are different ways to think about the PCR. So I actually increase the number of cycles uh, I do closer, uh, a higher number of cycles. Um, and then I also do something, I believe it's, uh, I can't remember the name, step up PCR, but uh, I'll document it correctly, where I actually do an additional three cycles at a slightly lower annealing temperature, and then I go ahead with a regular PCR uh, at a higher annealing temperature, and that increases the chances of you know, overcoming mismatches for the primer. So it's something that I'm doing because I care more about getting a product, if possible. Um, I don't want to get a product that's spurious, sense of control, uh, but I do want to try to enhance the, the probability that I get something for all the student samples, at least in the first go around. Uh, their troubleshooting can come later as we get into things that are more nuanced. So that's it. Um, we'll go ahead and do the PCR. We'll talk about quantifying it and uh, then loading it onto uh, a cell for sequencing.